Now, I want to turn to your other piece on The Voice. You say that there's this paradox of the yes case that's at the very heart of the referendum that's being put to the Australian people. What is this paradox? Well, the paradox is that the Prime Minister's telling us that The Voice will be a unifying moment for the country, that this will bring the country together. But the conundrum is that what we're talking about here is a group rights political body being put into the Constitution in perpetuity, and the group rights political body is an Indigenous political body. So what this means is we'll have this body sitting next to the Senate and the House of Representatives offering advisory opinions in terms of the way our system of governance works. So the concept here is a separate body, a separate body giving advice in terms of the interests and concerns and welfare of Aboriginal people, Indigenous mm. peoples, but also broader than that, giving advice in terms of general law, general policy and general application because Indigenous peoples are part of the broader population. So the paradox is we're expected to believe this is unity in separation. Now, I think this is the fundamental problem for the government. I think that those people voting no are voting no out of a sense of unease, suspicion and mm. a feeling that they're not convinced that this is the right way to go. Mm. They're committed to improving the lives and welfare of Indigenous peoples. I've got no doubt at all about that. The question is how we do it. Mm, mm. Look, there's 11 per cent of people who are still undecided, according to today's news poll. I'm sure there's other soft voters who could flip from one side or another. We're yet to see the Yes campaign uh, spending really kick in and, and, and the, and the full-on advertising begin. So um, the referendum isn't a closed question, even though the polls show support for it is well below 50%. You write in your piece that once created with a constitutional guarantee, the voice will be the complete master of its destiny. Nobody will tell the voice what to do and nobody can prophesize its operations. I, I think that point of uncertainty and whether it could be subject to legal challenge is something that it is a concern for many people. How much power would it actually have? Well, it, I'm certain that it will have immense power. I mean, all, all you've got to do is look at the constitutional amendment. I mean, the voice will be created in the constitution and it will have the capacity to make recommendations to the parliament and executive government. And these recommendations will come with great democratic and moral force. Anthony Albanese has previously said it would be a brave government that ignored the recommendations. So I've got no doubt the voice will be very important. It will be very influential. Mm. I think one of the paradoxes about the campaign over the, over the next couple of months because we'll, we'll, we'll hear a lot from the Yes case. The Yes case will have a lot of money. The Yes campaign will be up there in lights the whole time. The question, I think, given the trend is towards the No case at the moment, mm. is the conundrum that the more the public hears about the Yes case, the more sceptical they become of the Yes case. Mm. That's the problem for the government. Uh, I think also it's a problem that Anthony Albanese has been unable to answer questions on Patricia Carvelis's show, on the project, on Ben Fordham and then David Spears on the weekend. I think when people see he's not being giving full details and not necessarily being up front, that, that again uh, causes them to, to rethink. Paul Kelly, thank you very much for joining me. Really appreciate your time. Great to be here.